to talk about it in more detail. Joining us, the Joint General Secretary of the National Education Union, Kevin Courtney. Hello to you, Mr Courtney. Thanks for joining us on the programme this morning. Uh, what impact will this, these three days of strikes have on schools? Well, lots of schools will be affected. Many children will have to remain at home. And I want to say to you, Kay, we sincerely regret the disruption to children's education and to parents' working and home lives today. But we think we're taking action for a high moral purpose to try and get the government to invest in this generation of children who are being ignored by this government. So there will be disruption uh, on the three days of action. It's, it's strike today in the north, tomorrow in the Midlands, uh, on Thursday in the south. Um, and we regret that disruption, but we want government to invest in this generation of children. Impact on exam now. students? No well, I mean, it's the same, the same point being made. We regret that disruption. Now, teachers will work really hard with those exam classes. They want their children to do well in the exams that are coming up. But we make the point that there are GCSE chemistry classes without teachers who are qualified in chemistry. There are GCSE maths classes that are being taught without teachers who are qualified in maths. And that is impacting on those children exams preparation every day. And we're trying to get government to invest in order to overcome those problems. OK, so does that mean that exam students will be impacted? <clears throat> they certainly will. I mean, many schools, the exam classes will be in school, <clears throat> but there will be schools where they're out. There will be schools where those children are out of school. If they're out of school, I think they should be doing uh, exam preparation. That's what they could do this afternoon if they're not coming on our demonstration. But my point to you, Kay, is that their education is being disrupted every day by the fact that we haven't got enough teachers in our schools, enough qualified teachers. We don't have enough permanent teachers. There are temporary teachers doing their best. But children are being disrupted every single day, and that's because the government has let teacher recruitment and retention fall to such perilous levels. There have been pay cuts, there have been pay rises less than inflation almost every year since this government was elected in 2010, and they are carrying on now. The pay rise last September was 5% when inflation was 12%. The pay rise they're forecasting for this September is 3%, and forecasts of inflation are 10% on RPI for this September, even though it's starting to fall, or 6% on CPI. And those pay cuts are leading to a situation where we don't have enough teachers in our schools. And in addition, when they make pay rises, they often don't fund them properly so that schools have to make cuts to fund the pay rises. And that's why our members are taking a stand and they see themselves, and I agree with them, taking a stand for the children they teach. They are standing up for education, they are standing up for their profession, and they are trying to make sure that this government invests in this generation of children. The generation of children hit so hard by COVID, we're trying to make sure the government okay. invests in that generation of children. Mr Courtney, um, clear this up for me, if you would, please. Uh, reported that your Joint General Secretary missed uh, a very important meeting with the Education Secretary because she was enjoying the Norwegian fields. Um, is that right? We were fully represented at that meeting. I was at that meeting. Uh, Mary had a long booked uh, uh, cruise on a over half term holiday that she'd booked with a friend many years, be like a couple of years before. And we agreed she could go to that because I would be at the meeting with the Secretary of State. What they, uh, this is mischief making by the Department for Education. It is not a way to, will, to build trust in the negotiations because what they haven't told you is that a minister, Nick Gibb, was also not at that meeting because he was on a half-term break. Why do they tell you one part of that and not the other part? It's just mischief making on their part and it damages the prospect of reaching an agreement because they, they destroy trust in the negotiation process. Because Nick Gibbs not asking teachers to go on strike and your uh, Joint General Secretary is, probably. 
Well, we're not asking members to go on strike. Our members have voted in overwhelming numbers to go on strike. This government really doesn't like the fact that working people are allowed to take strike action, but they are taking strike action. Uh, it's the most effective strike action we've had, I think, since the 1980s in terms of the number of people involved in it. Uh, the fact that 50,000 people have joined our union, 50,000 people have joined our union since we announced our ballot results on January the 16th tells you that teachers, it's not us, it's not me and Mary making people go on strike. Teachers have had enough. They want the government to invest in them, invest in their profession and invest in the education of the children in our schools. OK. Um, it, it's good to talk to you. As we said, these strikes are um, going on for, I think, three days. So I'm sure we'll chat again, or perhaps there will be a deal before that. I'm sure that so many students and teachers live in hope that that's the case. But for now, thank you for joining us, as always. Thank you. Absolutely.